thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to the channel. I, of course, am Lewis Porter Jr. And today we're going to talk about something that's kind of important for all the best and all the worst reasons. So I'm going to speak a little louder because apparently it's very windy. I got a lot of notices going off in my stuff and it just seems like I'm going to be talking louder than normal. So today we're going to talk about art, AI, and influencing. And more importantly put, what's influencing what? So as of late, a lot of people have been showing off a lot of new artwork created by uh, a lot of AIs. Artificial intelligence for you who don't know. I don't know who they'd be, but whatever. So what I find disturbing is the quality of art has been getting better and better on these AI-driven sites. And, you know, I got to wonder, because I'm a fan of art. Everybody knows that I'm a big fan of art. Always loved art, loved, loved artwork. But even at this first generation of this iteration that's in the wild, as they say, I've been pretty impressed with what I've seen. I've seen some pretty horrible things, don't get me wrong. But some of the stuff that has cleaned up and gotten better has gotten much better much quicker than I thought it would. John Wick put out a picture, these four pictures he had of Asian influenced bugbears for something that he's doing, I think, later on. And looking at the artwork, I was kind of surprised how well it looked. And the more disturbing part on top of that was, I don't know what the cost was to make these, but I don't think they're as high as I think they are. And now you've got a situation where you can get probably some really good artwork, but you still got to work at it. You know, you still got to get it to be right, but you can have some really awesome looking artwork put out there in the field for an incredibly cheap price. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, Lewis, it shouldn't matter. I mean, if the computer can do as well as an artist, why not use the computer or vice versa? Like, well, it's never going to be as good as an, an actual artist. Well, I'm not going to fight for that decision either way or either way, because personally, I'm about whatever the environment has decided how you win is how you win. You know, I've been a graphic designer for 30 years, and I know in the 30 years since when I got in, when it was the beginning of using computers for it, there's been massive changes over time that have directly affected what I get paid. Because when I first got into this, you know, we're talking early 90s, you know, you could easily get paid sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, no problem, no big deal. And still, you know, at that time period, it was really great money. Now, over time, the money has kind of gone down because they found ways to do what I used to do professionally that you got apps to do it now there's so many apps that people can use to build their own graphic design ahead of what i've ever done it's almost silly to use me to the point where i've had to actually turn down jobs people have been like hey you want to build a website for me and then i'm like yeah you know not they go are you sure i mean it's really i'm like yeah no because you know what you want to pay me is not what i think is reasonable i had a woman i designed a logo for and after we were done, I mean, it didn't take me very long. And after it was done, she wanted to pay me a whopping $10 for it. And her answer was, well, you know, I could have gotten some guy to do for five bucks. And she's right. So here we are. Technology destroying the ability for me to charge what I normally charge for logos. You know, we're talking several hundred dollars. Because now you can do it relatively cheap and easy. So now the AI is moving into the space for artists. And I don't know about most people, but I think this is going to be a problem. I think this is going to be a problem that people weren't expecting and more overly the artists were not prepared for. I mean, okay, so here, here's my, here's my biggest fear and kind of, I'll say fear and excitement at the same time. So you'll kind of see where I'm coming from. If you could feed a computer enough artwork samples of an artist, it'll come closer to copying this person's art and technique. So for example, and here's where it gets scary, George Perez has passed away, but there's tons, and I do mean tons of George Perez artwork available online. How long do you think it would take for a computer to get fed that kind of artwork, build a sample, 
and start developing our work as good as George Perez. I have a feeling, based on what I've seen so far, it's going to happen a lot quicker than I ever imagined. In my head, I'm not going to lie, I thought this was like five, ten years off. I have a feeling we're more like one, maybe two years off. So something like this is standard play. I mean, think about how many artists you know that have done works for decades. You get all that information, the computer gets it, boom. It can translate to its art style and develop what it wants. Now, let's get even crazier. Suppose you combine artists. Let's, let's, let's do one that's going make a lot of sense. Let's say you get, you get Brian Hitch and Alan Davis. But I want Brian Hitch's earlier work when he started, when he really looked very much like Alan Davis, before he transformed in the Ultimates, which I consider to be his widescreen look and appeal. Think about what kind of art you'll get with that kind of stuff. I mean, hell. You start mixing and matching people together. George Perez and Phil Jimenez. Now, we all know Phil Jimenez. I, I'm going to say the word clone, but respectfully. I don't consider him to be a George Perez clone, but definitely influenced by George Perez's work. What's going to happen if a computer can match those two together and develop new artwork? See, I think... That's going to be the weird future. I think that people who understand the business are now looking at this kind of thing as a way to cut out artists. Because let's keep it real. If a computer can do what I want it to do and do the description, all I need to do is tell the writer, write the descriptions you'd write for the artist, what you'd like to see. And then we're going to run through this lovely computer that makes our AI art and that's it. Ta-da! <laughs> Come on. At that point, it's over. And some of you are like, oh, but Lewis, that won't happen. I'm like, oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. It will definitely happen. And some of you artists who have been clamoring, oh, I need to get paid $300 a page, $400 a page. You're going to find out the hard way that's not what the reality is going to be. And for you guys who still don't believe me, Here's a little insight. So I'm working on this website I've been developing for a while. And initially I was gonna do it as a lifestyle brand, it's no big deal. But I would have to pay writers to write articles about stuff. And I kept saying, oh, this is the thing that's gonna really kill us in the cost. The writers to do this are really expensive. Then we gotta go through editing, it's so expensive. How are we gonna, how can we get around this? So during my research, I found an AI writing program called Jasper. And if you haven't checked it out, I suggest if you're working in a marketing field, you should check this out because Jasper is amazing. So each month, I think I pay it, I think it's 29 bucks or 30 bucks. I get 20,000 words I can write on a very specific topic. And the thing I'm focused on, like I said, it's a lifestyle brand. So we do like daily posts. So I write roughly about 300 to 500 word posts every day. Well, I tell Jasper what I want. Hey, the top four, what are the top four things a man can do to become better at business? And then I tell it what level I like, professional level writing, and then I write who would be the focus, uh, people looking to become professional level. And then I push generate. And it scours the 10% of the internet that it's covered and done research on, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. And then it spits out a blog post of what I, the topic was about. And I'll tell you right now, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive to the point of, oh yeah, now I know how so many people on Fiverr have become um, writers for stuff because realistically, you could put this stuff in, do the whole thing and get paid from this. Because really, most companies don't know about this yet. And I don't think I'm at the cutting edge of it, but I'm definitely at the forefront. So much so that someone's going to make a million dollars on this. So if you think it couldn't happen to your industry, I'm just telling you. It's happening in writing right now and definitely will be happening in art for the foreseeable future. I guess we got to figure out what's going on and more importantly, what to do to react. So what do you feel about this? Or even more important, does it even matter? How should artists deal with this situation? 
So do us a huge favor. Uh, click the like button below if you like what I talked about. If you don't, click the dislike button. I'm cool either way. We appreciate you just coming by. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you all later.